in-person shows in my time, um, so I feel a bit of a virtuoso at them. Um, but actually, Rupert Brooke is, is my favourite of the ones that I've directed because I think it was the most challenging. Um, with some of the other work that I've done, they've all been very different, um, but they've all kind of had other elements in many ways to support them. So, uh, for example, you might have a show where um, the character plays lots and lots of different roles, so um, there's an easy way to kind of get through the story because there's always new characters coming on, even if though it's played by the same person. Or it might be a more natural storytelling sort of style, so the storytelling is what keeps it going. Or there might be other media involved, you know, projection or live music or um, those kind of things, all of which help sort of support and sustain the piece to keep it interesting and keeping it fresh for the audience. I think with Rupert Brooke, all we have really is Rupert Brooke's words um, and a very, very good script, um, and that's obviously was our starting point. Um, and actually really making that work and sustaining it through um, um, the, the journey on stage um, has been really challenging but really exciting as well. I think the set really helps this production. Um, what you first see when you come into the space is this very um, imposing kind of stone memorial um, uh, of the sort of people who died in the First World War. And it's hung at an angle that sort of feels like it's going to crush um, the actor at any second. Um, but underneath that is this beautiful kind of grass lawned kind of area that all the action takes place on. And it really came from just the, the, the feeling Anna Morris, the designer, and, and the discussions that we had ourselves. Um, we really looked at the fact that although we mainly associate Rupert Brooke with the First World War, a lot of that happens in our mind, um, but actually he had all this early life um, that uh, we really we explore in the play, um, and that kind of idea that identification with England and this green and pleasant land, um, and all that sort of comes out um, with the kind of the grass underneath, so you get this lovely playfulness and, and uh, the actor takes his socks off and shoes off, and, you know, and his bare foot on the grass, but at the same time you've got this, this big kind of threat kind of um, looming over um, the whole proceedings. And um, quite early on we decided to not worry, even though the, um, the script very much refers to letters because uh, it's taken from Rupert Brooks' letters and his, uh, his writings, um, we decided to do away with any sense of actual physical kind of writing implements or desks or anything that kind of rooted him in that kind of world. So what we're left with is this idea of Rupert Brooke kind of caught in limbo um, between um, the world of Cambridge and uh, the beauty of England and the, and the war and his sort of his final kind of, um, demise in that. Well, obviously you can't, um, can't do a show about Rupert Brooke without including his, his poems, because that's how, how we know him and, and, and what he's known for and his, what his brilliance is. But of course it does present a problem, because we want a lot of it in there, because there's so much that he was writing throughout the course of his very short life. But of course you don't want it to become repetitive, you don't want it to be the same thing over and over, or just sound like the kind of the poetry that you read at school and somebody reading it out. So really, how do you fit it in and make it an exciting theatrical part of the show and part of the narrative, but in a very meaningful way? And I think what we tried to do, and it gradually evolved over the rehearsal period, was to... Um, was to kind of approach each one differently and it kind of breaks down roughly into sort of three different sections but uh, so kind of some of it is almost lived in the moment it's happening there and then as he's speaking it and experiencing it uh, some of it is remembered some of it is 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 very kind of pertinent to uh, to what he's feeling or reflective on what's just happened um, and we try and keep all those things kind of um, there um, in the telling of them so, for example, in his early poetry, um, it's very, uh, the poetry itself is, is quite rough and ready um, some of the time. It's very passionate, it's very alive, um, it's very reflective of his emotional experiences at that point, uh, particularly his relationship with Catherine Cox and kind of uh, and what happened with that. Um, so we've tried to keep those ones, uh, you know, to be much more emotionally uh, alive and we actually almost reenact one of them, which is, uh, which is um, called The Hill, which um, really just describes a scene and is very um, evocative of that kind of feeling of first love and uh, and that kind of uh, moment in time um, but then um, as it kind of um, carries on sometimes it's just an outburst of emotion that just happens to come out in um, poetic form once you get to um, things like the old vicarage um, which um, obviously is is one of his more famous poems um, we we actually do something quite interesting there because it's a very long poem um, it's, it's a it's a well-known one um, and it's quite funny in places it's got a lot of kind of quirky things but we haven't done anything very um, clever with it physically physically on stage, we've allowed it just to kind of, the words to do the talking, but as the poem goes on, 
the stage becomes lighter and lighter and it changes so we change the whole um, state from being in this dark murky depressed state that he's in in Berlin to transporting him to Grandchester and to England and to uh, what it is that he's remembering and missing when he uh, when he writes the poem and um, so actually just through the, the pure sort of state and the feeling on stage um, we we transport him and by the end of the poem he's kind of lifted himself his feelings have kind of uh, he's lifted himself out of that kind of depressed state and then we move on to um, the next sort of stage of his life. When you then get to the war poems, um, he's definitely matured as a writer and I think you have to be quite careful that they don't become kind of hysterical or melodramatic or, uh, uh, you know, so, so although we want to give them the weight, we also don't want to kind of weigh them down with too much kind of extra baggage. So a lot of that, we've tried to let the words um, really be um, very powerful and, and we've just given space around them and, and let them sort of sit in the moment in time when we feel that he's written them. Um, something like The Soldier, which again is probably the most sort of uh, well-known of Warbrook's poem, is quite interesting. We've actually given it quite a light delivery on stage. He almost takes pride in this good piece of writing that he's, he's, he's put together, rather than labouring it with all the very kind of um, patriotic kind of uh, sort of overtones, which is certainly what it was used for sort of during the war. Um, and actually it's quite light and quite playful and you can almost see the writer at work enjoying his craft. Um, which again, very different kind of experience. And I won't give away the last poem and how we use that because I think that's something kind of quite, um, quite unique and quite uh, amazing and it's worth coming to see. I think the piece is a really good balance between the kind of the joy and the sorrow, between kind of comedy and tragedy. Um, it's very funny um, because Rupert Brooke was a very funny man and in his kind of writings and his letters to people that really comes across his kind of wit and his humour. Um, but obviously we know where it ends, um, you know, it, the, the journey takes us to the First World War and to his life being, you know, cut tragically short kind of at that time. And yet he also journeys halfway around the world um, with his travel writing earlier on, so we also get this sort of window into um, what our world was like at that time. Um, and we see the world through his eyes, through the eyes of a poet. So the, the journey is really kind of quite magical, it's very exciting, it's very funny, but then obviously is, is deeply moving at the end as well. And I think, you know, that that is, um, that is what makes it a good piece of theatre. And even though we kind of know where it ends, we know how he dies and when he dies, um, still somehow the journey is good enough that we forget about that along the way and it almost comes as a surprise at the end. Oh.